everyone. I have a process video for you today. But first, I have a little bit of a mixed media tutorial. So I have a 12 by 12 gel press here on my desk. I have these beautiful fall leaves, stamps from Tim Holtz, some permanent black ink, some sheets of white cardstock. This is just coconut swirl cardstock, nothing special, some golden white heavy body acrylic paint and lots of alcohol inks in some fall colors and I'm going to pull some prints today and there is my speedball brayer. So for today's blog post and video I wanted to play a little bit with alcohol inks and my gel press and you totally can use alcohol inks on gel presses. One of the best things about this technique is that you don't need any kind of special paper. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my alcohol inks, I'm putting them onto my gel press, just swirling them around wherever they want to go. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my brayer and do exactly what you do with any kind of gel press printing. I'm going to kind of put a nice layer of alcohol ink over the entire press with the brayer. Once I've gone ahead and put down all of these colors, I use some peach bellini, some lemonade, and then I did it a little bit of the gold mixative just in some little drops just to add a little bit of sparkle to my project. Once I was happy with the alcohol ink that was on my gel press, I let it dry. This is very, very important. Get up, walk away, do some laundry, make some dinner, whatever. Do a little housework, watch an episode of Friends. You want to let the alcohol ink dry. Once I had it dry, I took my stamps and a permanent black ink. Stays on ink works for this. Any kind of permanent black ink. Think about the ink you would stamp with if you wanted to color with alcohol markers. That's the type of ink that you need for this technique. I'm using an acrylic block. I am coating the stamps, getting a nice layer of that permanent black ink on my stamp. And then I'm just stamping it down right on the gel press. This doesn't have to be um, perfect. Just needs to add a bit of um, design. Another great way is if you're working with a smaller gel press, like a six by six, and you have a six by six stamp set, maybe a script stamp or something like that, that would work really, really good for this. Um, if you have one of those larger stamp sets from um, either Darkroom Door or Dilutions, they both make like 12 inch long stamp sets. You could add a border to your page. I want to create a fall layout, so I'm doing these beautiful leaves. And these leaves are some of my absolute favorite fall stamp sets, and they are still available over at a cherry on top. They're still in stock. You can grab one if you like. They're really awesome stamps. I love them. Once you're happy with your stamping, walk away. Everything has to dry. Let everything dry thoroughly. Once you have, once everything has dried, come back, grab your white acrylic paint, put it on a media mat or a nonstick craft mat. Don't put it directly onto the gel press. You want to load the brayer up with the white paint, but you need to be a little bit careful when you're putting it on your gel press, okay? Everything on the gel press should be completely dry. That's very, very key. Very important that everything be dry. And then you just wanna put a light coat of the white acrylic paint over the gel press making sure that white paint is covering all of the uh, alcohol ink. I don't wanna accidentally pull up the ink, the alcohol ink, before it has time to adhere to the white paint. So I 
chose myself to do it this way and it just seemed to work really good. Once I have a nice coat and I've pulled off the hair that will inevitably show up, I'm just going to go ahead and place my white cardstock onto my gel press. I'm going to go over it with the brayer just a little bit. And if this is the back side of the paper, so I don't much care <laughs> if it gets a little bit of ink or paint on it. I will say that if you are someone who doesn't like to make your tools messy, be forewarned that the alcohol ink, whenever you bring it onto the gel press, it will absolutely 100% stain your brayer. I'm going to pull and ta-da! Look how pretty that is. I love how this background turned out. Okay, let's pull another one. For my next one, my next background, I'm going to go grab some brighter, kind of bolder alcohol ink colors. So I really wanted to use the raspberry because that's bright and bold. I really wanted to use um, the kind of teal color. So another thing is I'm going to put a lot more alcohol ink on this pool because it's going to allow that color to be really bright and bold. So we're going to do some orange and some pewter. The orange I'm using is called Peach Bellini. Next I'm taking a stencil. This is a 12 by 12 stencil from the Crafters Workshop. I am using my brayer to adhere my stencil to my gel press. This step is kind of important because you we're going to add some more alcohol ink on top and we want our stencil to still have its stencily look. So I'm going to do a section at a time. I am putting this raspberry alcohol ink just in the little areas around the stencil and then using the brayer to go ahead and put that on. I did leave the orange and the pewter to dry always allow the alcohol ink to dry between coats. I love how these this one turns out as well. I use this raspberry because my plan was that I wanted to color match with some of the Harvest Market from Stemple Stories. And I could also use these uh, colors to pair with the new Plum Grove collection from 49th and Market if I wanted to. So this one uses stencils instead of stamps and I'm just going to cover this. Yes, this stained my stencil and yes, my brayer is no longer orange. It is now a bright hot pink. Again, let everything dry between coats and I'm going to pull up the stencil here. And then I'm going to let everything dry again. It was dry. I know, but you know what? That's like the most important part. The most important thing to do is to let everything be thoroughly dry <laughs> before you do the next step. Next, I am going to go ahead and add that white acrylic paint again over the entire gel press. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay down my coconut swirl white cardstock. Use the brayer again, give it a little bit of pressure. Make sure that the entire gel press is coming into contact with my paper. And then I can go ahead and pull. Look how awesome this looks. Eek, I love it so good just it's so pretty now for the next one I didn't even clean my gel press I just wanted gel press I just wanted to see what would happen if I just went ahead and left the gel press dirty just added some more alcohol ink let it dry and all that so I'm gonna go ahead and pop down some of the tealy colored alcohol ink and then some more raspberry 
This video is going to actually be two parts. So I have this kind of mixed media tutorial with all of the gel pressing and the pulling the backgrounds. And then I'll have a second video up, uh, hopefully first thing tomorrow morning. And that will have the process or actually, no, you know what? I'll do the video. Uh, I'll schedule the process video up for seven o'clock tonight. So you have two videos today, one with the mixed media process and one with the uh, layout process. So I am just adding these colors onto my, onto the gel press. Again, I'm going to go ahead and kind of let this all dry then. I'm not going to add any stamps or stencils or anything. I just wanted to um, kind of get a feel or an idea of what it would look like, what it would look like just plain without the stencils or the stamps or anything. I wanted something that was a little bit more painterly looking, a little more abstract. Walk away, let it dry. It doesn't take very long to let the alcohol ink dry. Like I said, if you think about um, just watch a friend's episode. By the time you come back after that friend's episode, it's it's done. And that's a friend's episode without commercials. So it doesn't take long, at most half an hour. Then I'm gonna go ahead and coat this with some white acrylic plate paint. Next time I pull this gel press out and play with it, I want to do a black background and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna pull the, I wanna pull some of the paint, some of the prints with um, black cardstock instead of white. So again, just lining that up, giving it a really good press down. This one turned out really fun and cute too, but not as nice as those first two. Those first two, the one with the stencil and the stamps are by far my favorite. And here is our third one. Just like I said, just a little bit more artsy and kind of different, but so pretty. And here are the close-ups of the three prints you saw me make. There will be a process video up this evening. And if you can't wait for that and you want to see the layout I created, then you can head over to the Cherry blog and you will find all the links for everything you need to recreate these beautiful projects in the description box below. Bye!